1992, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth gave a speech at the Guildhall in London. In that speech, she described 1992 as her Anna's Horribilis. She had a pretty bad year. Windsor Castle, where she spends a lot of her time, went on fire and millions of pounds worth of damage was caused by the flames. And not to mention the personal difficulties within the royal family at that time. That was undoubtedly for her a terrible year. Fast forward to 2020, and for us and our institution it started well, with a presentation of a record amount of money to the Northern Ireland Air Ambulance from our charity work. Thereafter it went downhill very soon, and I think we would rightly say 2020 was an honest, horrible year for everyone, with the uncontrollable surge of the coronavirus. It brought the entire country, no, the world, to its knees. And unfortunately it still rages on. The United Kingdom went into lockdown and we are still there in some places nine months after the friars first appeared. Even though in the early months of the virus when the country was bathed in glorious sunshine it felt like dark days were upon us with so many people being ill and sadly many losing their lives to the virus. Really dark days. And here we are at the end of a long year and in the damn dark days of winter, when it's almost dark at 3.30, especially if it's a wet day, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and there is, a, there is hope. There is a degree of control by the measures put in place by the government to suppress the virus, but more importantly, the scientists have worked so hard and so fast that a new vaccine has been developed to control and hopefully defeat COVID-19. And we give thanks to God for answered prayer for this, as well as to those responsible for developing the, va the vaccine. I urge each of you listening to this or reading this to take the vaccine so that life can begin to get back to normal. I have been amazed during the last nine months at the amount of charity work that has been shown to the community not by the government, it's the government's duty to do, uh, to look after its citizens. No, but by the people, food parcels being delivered, help with transport to deliver medication, get people to hospital and so on. For me, the amount of money and donations made by bands and lodges across the country, made to the deserving worthwhile causes has been tremendous. And I am pleased that our institution played its part as well. From what I see in social media, it amounts to tens of thousands of pounds, and that will be more because it's not all published there. To quote an American phrase or word, it's awesome. Each year I mention our security forces in the message, and today I pay tribute to every one of them, whether it's helping to construct Nightingale hospitals, tracking and tracing, testing for COVID-19, and very soon administrating the vaccine to people. These operations are being carried out by them are different from what you would normally expect a soldier, a sailor or an airman to be involved in, but it shows the versatility, the adaptability and the professionalism of our armed forces. And we also remember those of our military who are abroad doing work on behalf of this country and in the world. I thank on behalf of our institution, our servicemen and women, for their work wherever it is, always bearing in mind that do their work under constant threat from terrorists and enemies of the state. This year has been challenging and our NHS has been under much more pressure than it is normally, uh, to a point where it can hardly function. We salute all those who work on behalf of the NHS uh, for their dedication, hard work and difficult times. And I know that in our ranks we have some who work for the NHS and to them, on behalf of our institution, I say thank you very much. 2021 will soon be upon us and for our country it is of real significance. We will be 100 years old in 2021. During the 100 years there have been many dark days and they are well recorded elsewhere. 
Uh, today I prefer to remember the things Northern Ireland people have achieved in the past 100 years. Things like the Ferguson tractor, the portable defibrillator, the electric tram, artificial fertilizer, and milk chocolate. There are many more, all invented by Northern Ireland people. On the sporting front, we have the world champions, Johnny Ray, Joy De Love, Dennis Taylor, Alex Higgins, Carl Frampton, and the list goes on, too many to mention. A new name to be added to the list, Maggie Keenan, living in Coventry, but originally from Inniskillen. Last week, not many would have heard of her, but today she is world famous. The first person to have had COVID-19 vaccine outside the trials for the vaccine. Another first for our country. It has been said that we punch above our weight, and we have, and we are rightly proud so. So as we enter a second century, we look forward with hope and relief that we are still part of a great United Kingdom. Today, as we stand on the eve of our 100th birthday, we remember what the first Prime Minister of Northern Ireland said at the beginning of World War II. And I quote, We are the King's men, and we will be with you to the end. And I can assure Her Majesty that our institution will stand by that promise to a Protestant monarchy for the next century. There will be many activities to celebrate the birthday of our country and our institution will play its part in them. We look forward to the celebrations, so keep an eye out for details of where and when they will be held. Details of these will be published on our website at www.iloi.org. Christmas is almost upon us. And if you can meet with your families who have been self-isolating, shielding or distancing for the past months, please do, but in as safe a manner as possible. Uh, remember to stay safe as Parliament. This year, many homes throughout our country will be celebrating without a loved one who sadly has passed away. It will be difficult times for them and we wish them God's blessing in these days. 2020 is almost over and it has been miserable. But hope is on the way, as I said earlier, with the vaccines being developed. The Christmas season is the time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, born some 2,000 years ago. The greatest hope for the world. He is the hope for all who trust and follow him. And I urge you, if you've not already done so, take hold of this hope for yourself. In finishing, let me wish you a very happy Christmas and a joyful new year on behalf of the Independent Loyal Orange Institution.